It's a good win. There's a lot of people. It's like Woodstock, except everybody's got their clothes on. But eat a damn snack. You're like my wife when you get in space. You just get lost. Short steps are better than long steps. That's the only time in your life you're going to hit short is better than long. What's up, everyone? Welcome to 614 Headsets, the weekly podcast where we say football is unconditional love. We're three high school coaches from Columbus, Ohio, the 614, who just live, eat, sleep, breathe, and we love this game. I really think tonight might be one of our best episodes we have Mm -hmm. from what we're doing with a a new segment by Coach Sayers that he's bringing out. A great guest with Jack Sawyer. I just want to appreciate everyone for joining in. We just celebrated our one-year anniversary. It's been going great, man. We just love what we're doing. We love the ride and the journey we're on. We just had a big week in Columbus, Ohio, right? Like It was a combine week. I know Coach Sayers' combine went well. Ours went okay. Mother Nature (laughs) threw a a curveball at us. Just want to appreciate all the college coaches who who travel and do that schedule and come to that, right? It's not easy, and uh, we appreciate you, and I think our college following has grown, and we appreciate all the college coaches. It's been, it was cool linking back up with Plumlee and Manilac and Geyser and Cordell and all these different guys we've had on the podcast. So it was cool just to – see how they're doing and just touch base with them again. But uh, how's everybody doing? Are we doing nah, good? It was a great week. I, th- I think it just got the juices flowing for football season, in my opinion. Yeah. Like yeah. having an event, having our kids, like for us, out on the field, right? We went at 7 a.m. We uh, we were out there early. And I got there at like 5.30. <laughs> we had to set up the donuts and coffee, baby, get ready to roll. Yeah. We we didn't ask this. I didn't ask this yet, but uh, this will tell a lot. What donuts did you provide? Mm. You already know what ones. What? Krispy Kreme. Nah. All right, decent. But can I Dollar just fire, talk right? about? Can I talk about our man, mm-hmm. Coach Ward at Heath? He had specialized coffee, Jolly Pirate, and Wits. Coach Ward at Heath <laughs> just blew the top off. Even showed like a picture of like a pull behind grill behind somebody's truck. Coach Ward at Heath, you knocked out of the park, brother. You won <laughs> the combine game. That, that's great because that I all I had last year. You remember I had glizzies and bags of chips, baby. It yeah. was look the college coaches, man. They love when we do stuff like that for them. Honestly, like it was. They're just like, thank you so much for the coffee. Thank you so much for the donuts and. It was so cool to see for us and be out there in the morning and like our teachers are pulling in, our kids that walk to school are walking past the stadium looking and every kid's like, what are you guys doing? What's going on out there? And to have over 60 coaches and have 40 schools represented, it was actually super cool and just got got me ready for football season, got the juices flowing and our kids are pumped up now, right? Like Mm -hmm. that, that gives you great momentum heading into the season. Don, is, is that a Detroit Lions blanket? It's Listen, wife is a huge Lions fan. I try to get it out of the view, but then it tilts weird. Listen, once I get in the new house, this thing is going away. She it's your it. own room. Set it up wow. how you want. I didn't have, no, I didn't I have anything. I the same thing. This I never said, noticed that. That's new. No. That was not there in the past. That's this what is, happens when you get married. They start no. hanging stuff up in your room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's true. This has been up, I'm, no joke, for probably a year and a half. How does probably that get hung half. up in your room that you do your podcasting in? If you saw the rest of this room, you'd go, this isn't his room. This room is surrounded right now by wedding gifts, all from Crate and Barrel, all this random stuff in here that's just surrounding whoa, me right whoa, now. So whoa, it's whoa, really whoa. not my room. Doot, doot. Name drop. Okay. All right, big guy. All right. Hey, Donovan, go, go ahead and tell everybody about episode 44. Yeah, man. W- listen, we got a great episode coming in with not only a current – star of college football in Jack Sawyer, but a legend as it relates to Columbus high school football in terms of what he did when he was there at Pickard and North with Sayers and coached out, but to the man that he's grown into become. So we got a great episode diving into what Columbus football, what Ohio high school means to him and just his journey 
from his days in Columbus as a high school player, now to his days in Columbus as a Ohio State Buckeye, one of the rushmen for the silver bullets on that Ohio State defense. So a really great episode coming your way. Yeah, and we talked about episode 44, Jack Sawyer, the mm-hmm. rushman is what it's titled. And as we get going, this is it. We're moving forward. We're trying to do some new things. Ryan has got a great idea, something that's going to be a staple of what we do. And we're going to start every episode off with something we call Thought of the Pod. I don't know. We might change the subject. I don't know the title. I don't, it works for now. Got, if people got better ideas or a sponsor. Yeah, let, let us know on. if you got a, a better title. If but a sponsor wants to sponsor it and give it a different title, we are always open. Absolutely. And every episode now moving forward, we're going to bring you a quote, a word, a lesson, or a challenger, a challenge for listeners. And we want to make that be something we're thinking about, something we want to challenge people about, what something we're thinking about. And it's only right with Ryan coming up with a great idea with all the ideas. This show wouldn't operate without Ryan. Shut up. Ryan, go mm-hmm. ahead. You have thought of the pod. I think this one, when I was thinking about it, fits just perfect with who we have on today. Because I, I've said this year I dug more into the culture side, the trying to be a, a better head coach and run a better program, mm-hmm. just as an overall umbrella term. And when we were at the Ohio State Coaches Clinic, it, it said real big, the motto for this year, and it said tough love. And that was something that Coach Day was preaching on and, and talking about and saying how, you know, they teach tough love there. They teach what it looks like to the kids and what it means, actually. And and so I've it's been sitting with me about what tough love does mean, what it does look like when you have high school kids and when you're coaching high school kids and how you can have tough love with them and still them know that you love them, even though it's tough right now. And that's just been something that's been sitting on my heart a little bit this offseason. It's tough because you look at, a couple of different things, right? Like you look at, there's definitely today's generation, which is different from when we played, right? And you dive into it about the, you got to meet kids where they're at, right? Yeah. And there's also the, sometimes that's not always the best, right? And kids got to understand this is how it's going to be a little bit in the real life, right? And I'll just relate this back to even a scenario today was just uh, talking to a player about competing and being okay with competing and not comparing yourself to anybody else and gearing yourself to want to go into that competition. And more than just gearing, but believing in yourself, right? Like believing in yourself like we're it's too easy of a generation to quit yeah to go somewhere else to do something different and i think a lot of times kids don't understand you got to compete for everything in life like whether you're going to compete for a spot on a high school team a college team your future i told him like brother you're going to compete for a job in the future like you're going to compete for a girl like my wife. I love her. Amanda, I love you. But like, she dodged me for like seven months, guys. Like, is she? Is, is, thank God she did because we probably wouldn't have together without it. But like you got to compete for stuff, right? You got to compete for the love of your life. You got to compete for the job that you want. You got to compete for things you care about in life. Right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I think the tough love side of things is great. There's a lot of people that don't want to hear the truth. And I had two different coaches in college. I had one that was a salesman, the, the most perfect used car salesman in the world. And I had one that you always knew where you stood. And that's the guy I, I appreciate and love. And it's transformed the who I am as a coach today. Like the tough love honest where you're at where you stand um you, you're about the competition you're about getting better you're about the process and uh, i really think like america and kids and coaches and people etc you I, I really feel i think there's a backlash coming i think there's a lot of people pushing back to get back to that type of thing that's why i thought it was another that's why i just thought it was a great thing to bring up right now because i think that's like a thing that's getting pushed out is tough love it's getting pushed out of the game and it's getting pushed out of just society now so everybody 
or, or a lot of society now, a lot of our youth wants the, everything to be rainbows and butterflies. And that's just not the true fact of the matter. That's just not really what life is. And it life's tough and you're going to have, be surrounded by loved ones and people that love you and you have a great village to get through the tough times. But those people also have to show you tough love and be real with you in those situations too. And tell you maybe you're doing the wrong things or you're not focused and you're not going to class or you're not working as hard as you can. And that's where I'm taking it at is like with our program and our team is tough love is accountability also. Right. Cause not a lot of kids want to be held accountable right now. And I think for us is our kids holding each other accountable and showing each other tough love instead of just being that you think you're just a friend of that dude. So you let him slide on something. No, you're a great friend and you're a great teammate. If you get on them, you hold them accountable to always be doing the right things. And if they do one less rep, you're no, you're not racking the bar right now. No, you got one more rep and holding them to that standard that we talk about. And that there is to me is what tough love can look like at times on a team with the young kids, because you might have two or three guys that always do the right thing. No questions asked and are great leaders, but those guys have to feed into the other guys and they have to teach the other guys the, their ways and how they operate. And it's going to be tough to do, but it has to come through love and be tough love though. And coaches too, man. And Donovan, a yeah. point to this, like I, I, one of the things I always try to do is if I mess up, if I make a bad call, I try to eat it in front of the players. Hey, like this one's on me, guys. Like I, I made a bad call here. This is me. I'm human. Like I made a bad call. I put you guys in a bad situation. I'm going to take this one. This one's only on me. I, and I think over time, I think players appreciate that. You got to be tough on yourself. You got to be tough on your players. Today's about tough love, and, and uh, later on, Jack Sawyer is going to dive into what that means to Ohio State football today. As we get rolling today, 614 Headsets is proud to be presented by Fundraising University. Fundraising University Ohio offers a variety of fundraising efforts that helps football teams run profitable, effective, and fast-paced fundraisers designed to raise the most money in the shortest amount of time to reach their fundraising goals. Fundraising University Ohio is locally owned, operated and with their six step blitz system will help your team maximize profits as a current coach himself brent maxwell with fundraising university will sit down and help you pick plan strategize and execute your fundraiser that will allow you as a coach to focus on your practice time prep time player development and personal time if you're interested in us running a fundraiser for you please contact brent maxwell at the letter b maxwell at fundraising the letter u dot net or 740-501-8946 to learn how you can get started with fundraising man i'm excited for our guest today we got one of my favorite players of all time and obviously probably the best player i've had that, that i've gotten the pleasure to coach being the number one prospect in his class and now obviously taking over at ohio state and being able to be what were Jack? You were you were a second team this year, big all Big Ten. Yep, second team all Big Ten. And, and you're a three year letter winner there uh, this year, being your senior year, and you chose to come back, being an Ohio guy, born and raised. Uh, Jack, tell us a little bit and talk a little bit about your journey and how how, how you've gotten there. Yeah, it was a dream come true to be able to get to play uh, for the Buckeyes. I think you could definitely you and Coach Stout could talk about what it's like growing up in Ohio, loving the Buckeyes and. My journey didn't really, it didn't really start off the way I think I envisioned it. Uh, I think I'd be lying if I told you it did, but you know, you just got to go through that grind and the first two years, it, it goes a different direction than you would think. I know God was guiding me the whole way to the right, right spot. I just had to keep my head down and keep working and think I'm, I'm in the position where I'm in now and coming back, I got some unfinished business and one more opportunity to go you know, get all those goals that we've, we, uh, we set out to accomplish when we all signed our letter of intent to go to Ohio State. Super pumped up about this year. Super pumped to be on a, this podcast with you guys. It's good to see you guys again. I miss you guys, man. Jack, I got, I, I miss you too, brother. And uh, I sometimes text you a little bit through the season. I know you're a busy guy. I've never asked you this. And uh, obviously as an Ohio kid, you love Ohio State football. You obviously had a ton of offers. Was there any other school that was ever super close? If it wasn't Ohio State, who would it maybe have been? Man, that's a hard question because I think 
throughout my recruitment, I'd, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't starstruck by Ohio State the whole time. But I knew in the back of my head the whole time, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a Buckeye. But for a while, I definitely considered some other schools. But I think, honestly, I was never going to – I don't think anyway I was ever going to go anywhere else. You're super fortunate. I mean, Coach Johnson is fantastic. Coach Johnson awesome. was, was at Penn State when I was at Penn State. Is he still yelling at everybody to accelerate? He doesn't say accelerate. He says, accelerate. Is he still doing yeah, that? I mean, it's definitely still one of his things. Where you get by the tackle, and, uh, it's big and acceleration to get that sack. To speak on the, the players he's coached back at Penn State, you know, probably know all those defensive ends yeah, and D line. Put them uses. all together, man. Like it's it's he's crazy. You know, I, I I played with Aaron Mabin and Jared Odrick and all those guys, and obviously continuing into Tom Bali. Hey, I've told yeah. you guys before. Tom Bali, the first time he shook my hand, I've never felt so small, man. His, I, I <laughs> yeah. swear to God, when he grabbed my hand, it wrapped around it twice. Right he, now. He's came back and he's came back to uh, to Ohio State before and walked through some yeah. stuff with us. And super great guy, always down to teach you something. And every time you talk to him, you learn something about playing D line. It's funny. Uh, yeah, it, it's Coach funny Johnson. Some of, stuff, is, work, is some of the stuff that he did back then and how it translates to this game still today. I heard something today that they said, uh, I was listening to the New Heights podcast, and they were saying that Tom Ali is, like, huge into jujitsu and stuff, and, like, at, at camp would have mats out at camp and would invite the other O-linemen to come and, like, sprawl with them and stuff and do different stuff. I'd never heard that before. I've never heard that before either. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what he said. I don't really want to challenge him to a match. No, I'm not sprawling with that dude at all. Donovan. No. And everybody's so here. So everybody knows the connection. Coach Sayers and I were able and we're fortunate enough to coach Jack when he was at Pickering and North. And still to this day, like Ryan said, one of the best players we've ever had the opportunity to coach and be around. And so to kick it off, I thought we'd throw it back a little bit for uh, for Jack here and, and throw up a little high school highlights from his Panther days. What do we got here? All right. we This is North Mott defensive <laughs> end here up at the top. <laughs> this is a pretty regular scene. You see little, me little, in the bottom left? A little we... flex. I was in the press box. Oh, here we go. But many people don't know is Jack also played quarterback for this them was Panthers. The, this is... Chris, man. Chris he was electric. He had an arm. I wanted to make sure. And he can pass. I had <laughs> to make sure we showed that a little bit, too. All right. All the rivals. He's going to get juicy after this one. He's going to actually stare down. The opposite side. He's going. To, here we go. Ready? I don't know uh, if I played all. I, I remember this play too. I oh think yeah, I, he's going. Oh yeah, he mm. gave him that extra. This <laughs> is one of my favorites. This was a huge game. This was Ooh. huge. This was the game-winning yeah. touchdown. That was a. That was after we got the uh, onside kick too. Yeah, yep. that was a crazy. We'll talk about more. We can talk about it here. Say, here we go. We're gonna go QB wrap. Drop the ball. Oh yep, just how we drawed it up. Yep. 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 yep, yep. Up, 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 up. <laughs> you do a little swim, man. You're gonna do a little swim movement after this. <laughs> I know what this dude misses. Hey, hey, throw it to Dries out the backfield. I remember this one. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yep. Oh, the touch, the yeah, touch, the touch, on the touch. Look at this dude. All right, this was Jack's first game at quarterback. First drive. I'm pretty sure. This First safety's play. dad never looked at his kid the same <laughs> way ever again. He did that to this kid probably four or five times. So I, I had to put it on there, Jack. I had to go back and I had to find you some good uh, ones. And so Jack obviously is his junior year switched over to uh, doing both, right? He played quarterback, which limited his defensive snaps a lot that year. I, but I think he definitely went on some situations and some things. But the crazy uh, thing is it limited the reps. But this is what I tell people. Is he still, still had the production. Unbelievable stats. Yeah. So I, was, I would put him yeah. in for two plays and he'd make two plays. It me, as an all, as me as like the co-oc run game coordinator, you just gave me a Sherman tank to run the ball. I was so <laughs> excited and uh, it was awesome to see. And you got to see some of those clips. And then that first one from the orange, that was the first time we made that move, and that was cool to see. And so I, I just wanted to dig out some past highlights for you, Jack, and let the people know how talented you were, right? <laughs> But I, this is going to come back up. I'm going I'm to ask you a key question here in the pick six segment. That I can't wait. So, Ryan, get us into this uh, pick six segment. The best segment of them all right here. Uh, the pick six segment is powered by story, rival, sports media. Championships, friendships, and life lessons are among the most meaningful parts of the athletic competition. We are passionate about preserving them by offering the most unique highlight experience available. 
and Story Rivals delivers your team's content with services designed to change the way you experience these unforgettable moments now and for a lifetime. Story Rivals now offers a complete team apparel and player shop customizable to your program. Contact us by email at info at storyrivals.com to schedule an appointment with a member of your team. They came in, Ryan, the all blacks, baby. The ghost I already know. I've been is waiting in. for you to say right? the, Aaron, you knocked it out of the park with the ghost line. We're the talk of the town with the combine gears. Hey, don't sleep on story rivals. Get with them about your team apparel. You'll be glad you did. All right. So here we go, Jack. You got six random questions. You don't know what they are. I'm sitting on a good one. I can't wait to finally get an answer to Ryan. Go ahead and start it off. All right, now, so obviously being Ohio State, it, you you had to get humbled a little bit. I I want to know what was the most, what was the like most humbling thing that you you went through there that humbled you the most? Oh man, I can flash it back to my fresh going into my freshman season, fall camp, and, and I was Coach Johnson. He put me and JT and Ty Leak in with the ones a lot just to get us experience and let us run and. You know, they, we had two two dudes who start on NFL rosters at tackle, Thayer Mumford and Nick, Nicholas Petit Ferrer, two really good players. And I was about 250, pushing it. And uh, these guys are seasoned vets. They're on like year four or five. And uh, I got humbled a little bit. I think uh, the welcome to college moment was definitely against Thayer. I'd never gone against a guy that big and that athletic. He's 6'6, 6'7, 320. Got cat like feet. And uh, going against him, I think the first three days, I might not even want to rep. And coming coming from high school where I might not even lose a rep the whole the whole year in practice, that's definitely a different experience. And it took a while for me to understand, okay, these guys are good, too. The best guys in the NFL, you know, Chase Youngs, they lose reps all the time, too. So once you get over that little mental, that mental hurdle, it allowed me to get my feet run at it and uh, start making plays. Isn't it so different? I I had a similar experience. So I remember it was the first one on ones pass rush drill. Man, I went sprinting in there all excited. Jared Odrick planted me like no other. He was like an army oh ball, army bull all American first round draft pick to the Dolphins. Yeah, absolutely picked me up and slammed me. And it was one of those ones was like, yep. Like, this is big time college ball. Like, so I feel yeah. like it probably happens with a lot of people. And I was nowhere near a Jack Sawyer. That's awesome. Jack, my first question for you. So you get a, you got a unique perspective. You get to play in the greatest rivalry in all of sport in Ohio State versus yeah. Michigan. But then in your high school level, you got to play in debatably the best rivalry of high school sports in the state in pick central versus pick north. Yeah. So between What's those two. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, between those two, what's the more intense rivalry from your experience thus far? If you can answer that question, I know it's not the easiest th- thing to answer. Oh, I, think. I think I think to me that's an easy question. Is or it's an easy answer. I think it's it's us versus the team of North. Not taking anything away from the rivalry that Pig North Pig Central has. The thing with that is we grew up. We all grew up with each other. I had a bunch of good friends on the Central team, so. It's not as deeply rooted, and the people in Pickerton are still a community, tight knit community where everyone's close with each other and everyone's respectful. But this rivalry, you know, North against us, that's brutal. And uh, you feel, you know, definitely being on the losing end, unfortunately, the last couple of years, uh, you know, you feel it even more. And uh, so I think for me, I think that's an easy question. Um, definitely got to be us against Team of North. Is it's something you can't really explain unless you've lived it. I'm my wife, Donovan, but that was a stupid question. Yeah. That was the dumbest for... question I've yeah. ever heard in my life. That's a, that's that's a question. A good... Don't protect hold us, on, man. On. That's hold not on. even hold close on. to time a good out. question. Time out, time out. <laughs> I, know what, I know what the obvious answer for everybody is, but I'm saying oh, the, the question God. for him as a player. High I, school sports is different. Yeah. But what I was say is, yeah, sure. you figured in. my wife teaches bigger. Well, She's I, like, I'll tell you what I, what I can – what I feel like would be closer is the pick north, pick central in basketball. Because you're in, and I, I always love playing in Central's gym. I always have my best game against them at, at pick Central's gym. It's older, it's got the, the state championship banners on the rafter. They throw the baby powder up in the student section. You know, it's always rocking in that gym. So the basketball game in that rivalry, pick central, pick north, is off the hook. There's a nostalgia to an older basketball gym. Yeah, there really is. We used to play at Manchester Senior in the 
old school type of gym where it was like almost like downtown Chicago, all these levels. I'm with yeah. you. There's a nostalgia to an older gym. Hey, Jack there was is. a hooper back in high school oh, too. Yeah, That's he what was. People don't even think about the eye. There, my basketball, the, the basketball coach that I have at Northland, he always says that uh, all the time. He was like, that dude was cold in, in basketball. I was like, but he never, ever beat the coach's team one time. <laughs> never. Hey. I just have to put that out there for everybody. Dang. Coach Sears, sweat. he loves to cling on that. When he's the guy on the coach's team, all he does is foul you, <laughs> push you when you're shooting it. Try to D up full court. Jordan rules. Hey, Jordan ruled you, hey, baby. Hey, Jordan me. ruled you. Hey, excuses, man. Look, if you're the number one pro- – like I used to say, if you're the number one prospect in football, you should be able to get by me on, when I'm Ding you up in basketball and That's not complain Jordan. about a foul. Hey. Hey. Way to hit oh him with them Jordan God. rules, baby. <laughs> All right, Jack, <laughs> I've been dying to know this for a long time. Okay. Junior year, you moved over to quarterback. Yep. By what game did you and Chris come up with your own audibles and checked your own plays and what were they? <laughs> <laughs> like, because it became pretty apparent. We would call a couple plays, and y'all pulled some stuff out that was like, N- I, I know you came up with something, so elaborate. Coach Pruitt's probably going to listen to this and get mad. We have a play called, and I'd be looking. They'd, be, they'd have the box loaded because they knew we were running QB power 90% of the time. And I told Chris, I said, look, if we got a QB power on and they bring that safety down the box, I want you to run a, either a fade, I'm just going to throw it up to you, or run a slant, beat your man inside. And if it's not open, I'm just going to throw it right to you right away. And uh, that happened probably after the first game. There was this <laughs> game, dude. <laughs> At there was it at halftime of the second game we playing quarterback. We were sitting there, and I think we were struggling a little bit throwing wise. And I was like, "Look, Chris, I was like, dude, you're one of the best receivers in the state, if not the country, right now." I was like, "None of these DBs can guard you right here. If they load the box, I'm just gonna we're just gonna have the play called, and I'm throwing it to you." Dude, there else? was there was at least two times a game there'd be a call come in and this dude would just throw it up. Like I, I'll never forget. He came up with his entire own play action. One time it might've been Lancaster rolled out, went to this, threw it up. And we're looking at each other. Like, I don't know what he's doing. Like, I really don't know. <laughs> that was not what came in. And so I'm glad we finally got to rest on that. Good hey, but he did that on defense, too. There's times he would do something yeah. stupid on defense, but yeah, would awesome. make a play awesome. so then you you wouldn't I'm say sure. anything. Here's what happened on defense. They'd be gashing us for some yards, or they'd be checking it away from me. And we'd get to the sideline. Coach Sayers would tell me to do something. And then if it didn't work and I was out of position, he'd yell at me in front of Coach James to hide his ass. <laughs> <laughs> and I was cool with it because then the next time out, I would make a play for you. Right. You were crazy. That never <laughs> happened. I had to take a lot of heat for you. Don't act like every time you were out there about to get a 15 yarder, they're not like, get him. Uh, you're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> my next question, Jack, uh, for you is what's your most memorable moment or your favorite moment from your time in high school football? What was, what, what's, or, or your favorite thing about high school football when you played? I'd say my favorite thing about high school football for me, like my career, is just how much everybody, like the unity we had on our team, like how tight we all were and growing up with each other. There's nothing like high school football. I tell all the kids at North whenever I go back to work out and Coach Hillary has me talk to any of them, I'm like, look, man, enjoy your time here. Don't. It's easy to look forward and be really excited for what's to come uh, collegiate wise, but man, just enjoy this time here. Enjoy playing with the kids you grew up with, some of your best friends for life. And uh, I think also for me is how close I was with you guys. You guys made it, it awesome. And you guys made it enjoyable for me to come out and practice and play for you guys. Just the love you guys showed me and how much you guys cared about us, our relationship with you guys and Coach Hillerich and Coach Hill, Coach Jan, Coach Sinead, all of them. We just, I loved every bit of it. Loved every minute playing for you guys, going to battle for you guys any day. I would have ran through a brick wall if you guys told me to back then. I still say this to this day. One of the most impactful things I remember about Jack was the way he would come into a practice, right? 
and we wouldn't let him do all the one-on-ones because it was just too easy and it just crushed sure. everybody. But like the way he had a particular plan for that day. And he so he would come in and it was today, I'm going to work on this pass rush move or I'm going to work on this, right? And so a lot of times it was this move or he was working this move plus the counter he liked off of it. And I still, to this day, as a high school coach, when I'm hanging around one-on-ones and I'm talking to defensive guys or just guys in general, like that preparation and the detail that went into just that practice, right? You know what I mean? And that's one thing I'll I'll always remember uh, about Jack and my time with him. It's awesome. Jack, my second question. So flipping it from high school to college a little bit. What's been your favorite memory or moment as a Buckeye thus far in your career, if you could single it down to one, or if it's a couple of them, what's been your favorite memory or moment so far in your career? It's another good question. I think my favorite memory or moment of uh, my collegiate career would probably be some of the big wins we've had. Obviously, are always fun, always great. I think for me, though, personally, it's kind of like the midway point of last year. It's hard to explain. You don't. You go in there. You practice every day, you lift every single day, run every day in the off season. You, you do all this work for 12 guaranteed games. And my first two years didn't go anywhere near how I would have wanted it to go. And I think middle of the season last year as a junior, I hit this point where I felt like, man, like I, I can dominate the college level. And I think, man, there's no reason why I shouldn't. I should hold myself to that standard of play. And I think that once I got, got to that point and I started having fun playing again, I felt like I was in high school again, having fun with the guys out on the field and not worrying about anything else, not worrying about what someone's going to so say. Once you start playing free, you're going to have fun playing football. That's when you play the best. And I think after that, once I made that switch, I took off and played my best ball that I had in college. And I was around like the Wisconsin game-ish. So then after that, I think the rest of the season was a blast. I, mean, I was having fun with my guys, you know, JT and Tyleek and Mike, and celebrating with the whole defense. It, it just makes it so much more enjoyable. Uh, when you're having fun and feel like yourself again out on the field. Yeah. Let's press pause there. I don't want to put Jack in a situation. I'm not even going to ask Jack to answer this question because I don't want to put him in a situation. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um, I've always felt I don't understand the coaching decision to take the best edge rusher in the country and to move him away from edge rushing, right? And so I'm not going to put Jack in a situation to – uh answer that question or how he felt about being in that position or things. I think in some ways it helps show a lot of versatility. I think it helps Jack in in the future as he gets going into uh, the next level, different NFL schemes run different types of defenses and want players to be in different spots. But um, just to me personally, being around Jack, knowing his skill set, seeing what he did this year, nothing against Ohio State. There's a lot of coaches they're better than me. I'm not going to say they're not. They definitely are. But <laughs> to me, still the greatest question, how you take a kid who's one of the best edge rushers in the country and move him away from what he naturally does. So. I think that was another thing. You said you got comfortable this year. You felt like we were back in high school and you could see it on the field. That was the cool mm-hmm. thing is like seeing you celebrate, seeing you having fun again and yeah. like having that smile on your face after you make a play and, and not thinking about something you might have messed up early in the game i feel like early on you were like beating yourself up on some like things but if you would mess up or, or miss something or or you weren't making plays early on you was you look mad you were like because in high school it was like all right jackson he's about to go get a sack I mean, he's that quarterback he's touching the ball every play <laughs> yeah no it's a, it's different it takes a while if you're used to like people always say let the game come to you and uh, growing up i thought that was the biggest bullshit I've ever heard. I'm gonna go get I'm gonna go take the game over. Which you can still, but you get up to this next level, there you know there's a lot of good players. And sometimes the flow of the game isn't coming your way. They make a lot of plays. The ball's not coming your way. They're not throwing it. They're throwing it quick, which a lot of teams do to us and why our sack numbers have been so down. So having to go through that and learn and realize that that's just part of the game and part of the process. But controlling what you can control and doing your job each play is non-negotiable. So once you get through that little hurdle, too, you just really start to see yourself take off. Who's next? I'm hey, you're next. You're next. You're you're the last next. next. All right, last question. All right, in honor of the Tom Brady roast, right? It was pretty yeah. good if y'all haven't checked it out, at least awesome. the first half of it or so. It got a little as it went on, but yeah, hey, 
who's the one coach on the Ohio State staff you would love to roast? And who who would maybe be the best entertainment? <laughs> I think the funniest to roast would be probably Coach Knowles. Coach Knowles, he's such a funny guy, but no one gets to see it. Like, you guys probably have no idea how funny Coach Knowles is, like yeah. some of the stuff he says and how goofy he is and how funny he is to be around most of the time unless he's yelling at you for something you did at practice the day before. But I, th- I would say him. I think the guys on the team would agree with that, too. It would be fun to, to have a, a roast of Coach Knowles. But I love playing for him. He's a funny guy. A lot of guys don't get to see it. The media doesn't get to see it. Being in that meeting room with him every day, it's always something funny. You know, he'll come in dancing or – He'll come in and say something just off the wall. Like Coach Sayers does sometimes. You're like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Sayers is off the wall at times. So, Every yeah, time we get on this that's show. That's a good one. We saw a little bit of it after sprinting out of them skull sessions and some things. So let's get into the real nitty gritty. Let's get into the conversation with Jack. Let's do it. So, Jack, here's the thing, a big conversation with you and getting your thoughts on high school ball in Columbus, your time at Ohio State, what you've learned. And so I guess the first question I want to ask you, I, you played high school ball in Columbus. Uh, I played at Gahanna in, in 2016. And I think there's a lot of, I don't want to say misconceptions, but when, when people talk about what high school ball is about around the country, they talk about Georgia and they talk about Texas and Florida. And this question isn't really about like the talent level of Ohio or anything like that, but what is something about Ohio high school ball or Columbus high school ball that you think people don't really understand from your point of view, whether it be the talent or the culture or just the competitive competitiveness? What's something you don't think people really understand or don't talk about enough when it comes to Columbus or Ohio high school football? I think, like you said, Columbus high school football and I think Columbus high school sports in general have been, have been sent out top talent in, in, in every men's sport, women's sports. If you look across the country, that we're all like, there's guys from Central Ohio, pretty much every major college football, college basketball roster in the country. If you think about it, yeah. And I think of that. Not, not to take any way, anything away from Texas or California or Florida, Georgia. Those are all hotbeds too. But I think people look past Columbus and the talent that it produces. Really, Ohio as a state. I think I, I think myself sometimes don't realize how many guys come out of the state that are playing in the SEC or playing in the ACC, getting drafted. Dwayne Carter just got drafted. Uh, the list goes on and on. The guys in the NBA playing, Jay Sean Tate and all those guys. So if, if you look across Columbus, Ohio, Pickerington in general, I'm a pick town guy, so I'm a little biased, but look at all the talent that's been produced in professional sports in Pickerington. It's awful. You, you wouldn't believe it coming from a small suburb like that. So I think that people really don't realize how much talent comes out of Ohio every year, in every sport. Men and women. I got a good one. And obviously a lot of the people that listen to us are, are high school coaches. I think that's probably our biggest viewership. And I've been waiting for the point to talk to you or Chris or some other players who have gone on to the next level and had a lot of success. What are some things high school coaches could do better? What are some things that high school coaches could do better to prepare players for the collegiate level? And be honest, I think we're, I think as coaches, we always want to try to grow and do better. I think that's why a lot of us clinic and listen to things like this because, because we're in that pursuit of perfection and, and being better for our players. So is there anything yeah. you feel that could be done better? I think that's a great question. I mean, I, I think I've talked to Coach Sayers about this a lot. Is I think a lot of coaches in high school think that they're, they're not very open to change. And football, the football in every in every facet of O-line, D-line, receivers, DBs, quarterbacks, everything's always evolving. And I think a lot of coaches get stuck in their ways of doing things or get stuck in their ways of thinking how this is how the game's going to be played. When if, when if you don't adapt to it, you don't, you're not willing to change your philosophies or change your schemes or let guys use different moves, you're, you're going to get passed up, especially with scheme and, and rotations and stuff like that. I think that high school coaches can kind of, I don't want to say take the reins off players, but I think sometimes coaches are so stuck in their ways when it comes to high school and uh, I think that if they're real, more willing to adapt and change, like Coach Johnson, for example, he's one of the best D-line coaches to ever coach, right? But he brought in Coach BT, Jordan, who actually is not going to be with us this year, I don't think, anymore. 
but he's a pass rush specialist, right? He's got a lot of things that he, him and Coach Johnson talk about, and, uh, you know, Coach Johnson ended up loving and ended up teaching us. So it's just being open to change and being open to adapt. I think that at Ohio State in general, you know, the coach is always looking for something new, something that they can give us that's going to help us and give us any little advantage we can on the field. So I message all the high school coaches, you know, just be willing to change. You don't have to change everything, but be willing to adapt and, and implement new things that's going to help your players succeed. Jack, here's a question from the other side, too. I think a lot of kids, a lot, I'd say majority of kids in high school, whether it's Ohio or anywhere else, a lot of them say, I want to play college football. I want to play Division One football. And yeah. everybody thinks, and all of us here have played college football. Everybody thinks that it's going to go a certain way. And yeah. not to say that it's not fun, but when you get there, it's a regimented schedule, right? Like it's the same yeah. times it's camp, it's coaches yelling at you. When you, if you could give any message to high school kids or college ball hopefuls, what's something that, what does it truly take to play at the next level? Not just at Ohio State, but in general for college ball, like something that the kids may not understand that are really hopeful for it. I think that you got to realize that you got to love it to really yeah. be able to succeed and, and have fun with it. You got to love it. I've seen guys who are miserable yeah. showing up to practice every day because they, they just don't love it. And I'm not saying that every day I'm super excited to go to a practice or super excited to go to a 6 a.m. lift, but in the back of my head, I'm like, man, like God gives you so much potential and it's on you to go reach it. And when he gives you abilities that he had, he didn't give anybody else. And you got, it's on, you got an obligation to go use it and fulfill those. And we all just wake up every day and I, you, know, you just got to tell yourself, I'm thankful to be in this position. I get to go work out at 6 a.m. and run. And some people didn't wake up this day. And I think that if you have that mindset, always being appreciative, even if you're going through a hard week in, in the off season. Like for us, sometimes it's two mad drills and a team run and it's back to back to back to back and you can hardly walk the next day. I think that if you really don't love it, you're going to find out real quick and it's going to be, it's going to be real eye opener. And, all, and the other thing is coach day always says this is it's never as bad as it is. And it's never as good as, it, as you may think it is. And that can be the day you're having, that can be the practice you had the day before the game you had where, Let's say you had three sacks, but you missed two. It's not as good as you think it is. Or you had a bad day and you, you messed up a couple of times, a couple of MAs, your grade for the practice is bad. And film session was super long and you're getting ripped the whole time in front of everybody, which is embarrassing when you first get there. There's always something you can improve on. And there's always something to be thankful for each day. I think it's, it's a hard transition. You said, I, I think – the cool thing that you said there was like that you have to love it. And, and mm -hmm. one of the things they talked about at the Ohio State thing, uh, at the Ohio State Clinic was they put up there the motto this year being tough love. And I was going to ask you, that was one of my questions. How is that being incorporated for you guys there? Like, how are you buying into that motto of tough love? What does it mean to you guys? What does it look like? How do the coaches demonstrate that? Yeah, it's tough love, which is, I, in my experience, it's the greatest motivator. You don't want a coach that's always going to say good job. Coach Johnson says, if I'm just saying good job to you, you're probably not doing a good job. Or I, I'm probably passed up on trying to teach this to you because you're probably not getting it. So, like, the tough love part, man, it's hard. Like, it's going to be days where, man, you're going to think, that I, I don't want to go in this meeting and see this coach or that coach because you're going to get yelled at for this or that. And then it's tough, but you, you got to get through it knowing that coach has got the best intentions for you. He's trying to help you. Even though at the time it may seem like he's just trying to come down on you about what you did the day before in practice. So the tough love thing is real. And Coach Day does a great job of preaching that to us and, and making it a thing throughout the Woody is no matter. And we got the thing called the red line. And the game of football does not care about what's going on outside of the game of football. And that's another thing where, you know, as soon as you cross that scarlet line, Coach Day says you leave everything that doesn't involve football at the scarlet line. And as soon as we cross off the scarlet line after practice, then if someone's going through something or someone's having a rough time, that coach or us as players, we're gonna put our arm around our brother and, and let them know that, hey man, we're here for you, man, we're gonna help you out. But um, you're on that field, it's, if you're not completely focused and dialed into your job and, and to executing on the field, then it's gonna, the game doesn't care. The game's not gonna, it's not gonna go your way. I got a good one for you, Jack. And actually, this one kind of came from my wife a little bit. But she said, 
what coach taught you the biggest or best piece of advice in football and what was it? That's a tough one. I think I could go a bunch of different ways here, but I would say Coach Johnson taught he get he, Coach Johnson's a great public speaker and he's great at telling. He's a great storyteller. Great, and, and he tells these stories that really feels like punches you right in the square in the nose sometimes. And he it was like my sophomore year, and he, every day he comes in and he reads us a Bible verse, and he was reading a Bible verse. And then he got to the point of where he was talking about the bald eagle. And the bald eagle is one of the biggest, toughest birds in its, in its, its food chain. And he said that when you're at the top of the food chain, they all, you always got somebody after you. You always got somebody trying to pull you down, get at you, beat you, take a shot at you. And he told us the story about the bald eagle and how when they fly to the level other, other birds can, Man, they, they all, they get five crows on them every time they do it, but they do it on purpose sometimes because they get them and they fly as high as they can and the crows die when they reach a certain atmosphere. And uh, Coach Jay said, he used that as an example. Once you get to the, the, the highest point you can, the pinnacle of college football, defensive player of the year in the country, no one can say anything to you when you reach that point. And it's always a journey. And until you get to that point, you're gonna have a lot of obstacles, a lot of people coming at you in different angles. And I think that kind of, that hit home. And I think that, that I took that and that means a lot to me personally. And to a lot of guys on the team too, is everything's not going to be perfect. And if you don't, if you focus on the stuff that's not going perfect, instead of focusing on the stuff that's, you got room for improvement, looking at stuff, it's all about perspective. And I think that if you have the right perspective on stuff, it's going to help you out in everything yeah, you do. I, I listen to this one podcast and he always says perspective drives performance, right? Like the way things is going to drive you, how you perform. But Coach Johnson, you say he's a great storyteller. I love listening to him at clinics. He yeah. does such a good job. I'm going to tell you right now, one of the best pregame speeches I have ever heard is from Coach Johnson. And he talked about the secretariat. So he gave this mat and I don't know if he's ever repurposed this. So we'll, we'll let you Jack chimes in. Coaches like to repurpose some of these throughout the years. But he talked about secretariat, right? And uh, Kentucky Racehorse has blown by everybody biggest race wins in history but he, he made this about being about the heart of the player the heart of secretariat how when secretariat died his heart was two times the size of what they've ever seen and how that went on to him outrunning everybody and, and building a record and he just talked about the spirit and the heart of a player and things and so still to this day is one of the the most fire speeches i ever heard before a game was him giving a history of Secretariat, a racehorse at the Kentucky Derby and how that related to football and being a, a player and stuff. All the pregame speeches he's given us, it's they, they give you goosebumps a lot of the times too, what he's talking about and how much passion he delivers those on. He's mastered public speaking. Oh, for sure. And, and, and giving the attention of the audience. That's awesome. Jack, here's a... A little bit of a random question from the offensive side. Who's the best alignment you've ever played against? Might have been Thire Munford. You talked about that story from when you were a freshman, kind of your welcome college football moment. But from your yeah, time, who's the best you played against? Oh, man. We play, I played against a bunch of good ones. Tom Jones, just how big he was. It was really hard to go up against him. We used to have some good battles back in the day in practice. Thayer Munford, Nicholas Petit Ferrer, all great players. I think our two tackles we got now are really good too. Josh Simmons and Josh Fryer are both really good players. I can't wait to see the years they both have this year. But I think outside of the team, Marius Mims, who just got drafted to the Bengals, I believe, really good player for Georgia. Olu from Penn State was really good. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a handful of guys who you walk off the field like that dude's a legit, that dude's a legit left tackle, that dude's a legit right tackle. So there's been a handful. I'd say those three guys that I just named are probably the top of the top that I've gone against. What's harder from your perspective as a DN, like when you're facing like a tackle? Because I think there's two different types, like just what you generally see from like top end tackles. You have DeWan Jones, maybe Thayer Munford type that are like big, like they're bigger than most tackles that you see, like they're thicker versus yeah. like the Paris Johnsons, Josh Simmons, where it's like they're still giant guys. But yeah. they're like way more like nimble, light on their feet, athletic. 
Like, uh, what's the harder if, if there is one or if it's about equal? What's harder to go up against from your perspective? Like the big mauler who gets sand out of your done, or the yeah. athletic guy that can match you? I think it's the mixture. I think when you got a really athletic guy who's also who would you wouldn't think would be as strong as he is, like Paris Johnson. He's super athletic, but he's he's also a mauler too when he gets his hands on you. So I think for me personally, I think the guys who have really good feet and are patient mm-hmm. are the hardest guys to go against to me. A tackle, I love a tackle that wants to kick out right to me and try to put his hands on me right away. You love those type of guys because it's a simple move to get by them. But guys who are real patient, they kick to their set, they stay square, real patient hands, but when they do shoot their hands, it's violent. Those are the type of guys that are probably the hardest to go against. Coach Stout probably loves me to hear that. He loves to hear that. The patient Patient guys are the best, man. I'm with you. Uh, 100%. The the most – there's a difference. Like, the best tackles are the ones that are just calm in space. They understand rhythm and they understand space. Those are the best guys that that are comfortable in that. And so we used to just bully all his tackles at practice, though, Jack. I love that. Here we go. Uh, This this will be my last question for Jack, (laughs) and uh, you guys can finish up any questions you have. But I don't don't think we can leave here without asking, like Jack. There's obviously a a massive reason you came back your senior year. I don't think we have to ask what does a rivalry mean to you because we're all Ohio guys and we know that, but. Talk to me about what would it mean to write the ship against Michigan in your final season, or what would it mean to you to graduate without a set of gold pants? Yeah, it mean everything to me. And I think it mean everything to guys on the team, coach day, the stuff that he's had to go through the stuff he had to, to hear people say about him because he's lost one game November the last few years. It's unfortunate because that's a guy I go to war for with anything. The love and respect I have for him is through the roof, all the coaches on the staff. And I think that when, when us and a group of guys who could have went and a lot of us get picked in the first three rounds, decided to come back, I think that was the biggest reason is we feel like we haven't fulfilled our obligation to Ohio State, to the program, to Coach Day and Coach Mick and everybody who's done everything for us, helped us reach our dreams of playing at the highest level and being great players. We have to fulfill our obligation to them and uh, chasing the things that, that mean the most, which is the team accolades. And uh, beating the team up north is something that I think for all of us would mean the world. And it, it would mean everything to our careers. And not only that, though, you want to go on one big, I have won a Big Ten championship, obviously. No national championship. Those are all things that when we signed up and gave Coach Day our pledge to come to Ohio State, those were all things that we had circled to do. And we haven't been able to do any of those. And, and to be able and to leave knowing we had another chance to all come back and do something that could be talked about for the rest of Ohio State football. If we go out, beat the team in the North, win the Big Ten title, and win a national championship, it wouldn't have felt right to leave that to leave that up in the air for what would have happened if we did all come back. So excuse me, but we all got the that in the front of our minds every day. And that's the main thing driving this ship. And it's do or die now. It's our one last ride. There's no do-overs now. Every day counts that much more, and we're going we're to go after it with everything we got. Awesome. Sayers, you got anything? Yeah. You want to wrap us up? Yep, Jack. I think we got one last question for you. Through your journey, what has been the biggest – what's been, like, the biggest lesson that you might have learned – throughout the entire journey that you said, and I think it's because, and related to life, like not football though, like your journey, you talked about, man, it didn't go as you envisioned. And that was yeah. one of the questions, but you answered it earlier. You said that my journey hasn't been what I envisioned it to be. And what I'm curious, what did what lessons did that teach you relating to just life, not even football? Yeah, man, it taught me a lot. It taught me to never get too high or too low regardless of the situation and uh, to be thankful for what you got really if something's not going right in your life or if something if, if you're not where you want to be in your life is to still be thankful and grateful for what you do have for the time being is i think it's huge and i think a lot of people lose sight of that they see what other people are doing what other people got going on instead of focusing on what they have being thankful for what they have and loving who they have around them and, and being grateful knowing that god's got a plan for all of us and all we got to do is trust him and put everything into, her, in, into him and, and let him guide your life. And I think that once you do that and you stay humble and you stay hungry and passionate for the things that you do want to achieve in life, that 
you know, everything's possible with the right mindset and the right work ethic. You guys hit on it earlier that all, all the kids you guys coach want to go to Division One, And that was a dream of mine since I was a little kid, too. And if you really want to go to Division One, you're going to have to sacrifice a lot of things. If you want to play at the highest level of collegiate athletics, you're going to sacrifice a lot of things. And I think once you're able to realize, once you're able to put things in a priority list and make them that and live by that, I think that that's when you're going to see your most success. And that's when you realize everything's attainable uh, with the right approach and the right foundation you build for yourself. Stout, you're muted. Dang. Yeah, that was probably some fire. I saw him talking. That's My bad. But he, he, that's brought kind of great, embarrassing. he brought up a great point. And like comparison is a thief of joy. Like you yeah. think about it, like that's something I've had to learn as just an adult. And, and yeah. you know, we all live in a social media world where you see the best of everybody had to have a, a player meeting with a family today. And that same exact point came up about comparison and believe in yourself and how comparison is a thief of joy and things. And so I think to me, it's very interesting to even hop on here and hear you say that. And I think there's a lot of people that I hope they learn from you saying that yeah. we're talking about number one prospect, right? All these other things. And he's talking about my college career maybe didn't start out how I thought it would, or there's been some things and to hear your maturation of not comparing and how you have regrounded yourself into what is important and what to focus on, how that has led to success. And I think anybody that's listening, whether you're a, a dad, a, a high school coach, a college coach, or just life in general, right? How everybody can learn from that lesson. So Jack, I, I appreciate you coming on, man. I'm so excited. I had an opportunity to catch up back with you. I love you, brother. I hope you have a great year. We're rooting for the Buckeyes. We're rooting mm -hmm. for you. Sayers, go and wrap this up, man. Man, I, I this episode was probably one of my favorite ones. I, I couldn't wait to get on here with Jack, man. And uh, we've been trying. See, yeah, seeing him last <laughs> video a couple times, a couple times. But no, it's all right. He's a busy guy, and we know that. But seeing him last weekend for his birthday with Coach Ned, and seeing Coach Grizz, and some of those other guys that we that played there, we got. To, I got to see Josiah, Femi, Jimmy. It was just super cool. And that maybe I was just super pumped up for this week's episode and stuff. So, Jack, we greatly appreciate you uh, coming on here and, and just giving us the time out of your night. Man, I appreciate you guys. This is one of the greatest things about playing at Pink North is the relationships I've built with you guys and Coach Hillary and the rest of the, you know, the coaching staff that's going to last a lifetime. And, man, I love you guys, and I wish you guys both the best of luck this year. Coach Donovan, you as well, this season coming up. I'll be watching you guys. I always keep on keep tabs on you guys, and uh, I just I'm waiting for that Northland Gahanna matchup. I want to see what goes down. With that, that he, was, he, he would never. He, he, he was, denied never. the contract. He <laughs> denied the contract him, last year. There was an open date, year, and he no. denied the contract. He did Sorry. not want to play us. So anyways, we I moving on. Said no. I Mo moving on. Stop. Hey, everybody, yeah. make sure you check out Fundraising University. Reach out to Brent for all your fundraising needs. Don't forget to sign up for the tickets to the Memorial Tournament. Give a shout out to Story Rivals. Once again, the player swag, the, the highlights, everything they could bring to you is uh, top notch in this area. And uh, make sure you check out the home of uh, 614headsets.com to find us everything we do that's great. So, Jack, we love you, brother. Good love luck. Love you, brother. Year. Have a great night, y'all. Love you guys. Man. Love you guys.